So thank you, mothers and others. We are ready and moving on to our next candidate. So let me introduce you to Jay Daggett. Jay Daggett is a candidate for Texas House District 25. This district covers the coastal area southwest of Houston in Brazoria County. He's running against Republican incumbent Jody Vasut. So welcome, Jay. I'm so glad you're here. Please tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running for office. Nancy, Nancy, thank you so much for, for mothers and others. I, 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 this, I'm new to hearing that, so I really appreciate the time and the opportunity. Um, as Nancy shared, my name is Jay Daggett. Uh, I am a, a Pearland resident uh, running for state representative uh, District 25 in Brazoria County, which is a county that is just south of Harris County. And we run essentially from Beltway 8 in Houston all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, I have a, a pretty pretty sizable district that I'm wanting to represent that has been traditionally red um, and and red for you know almost 30 years. So as long as the Republicans have have um, laid laid domain over over our rules and and our area, Brazoria has been red. Uh, but things are changing. Things are ch changing. People are moving south. People are moving into uh, Brazoria County. At, at a clip, Fort Bend and Brazoria County are the two fastest growing counties currently in Texas. Uh, as as our freeways get wider, people are moving uh, further south. So we're enjoying a little bit, bit of that. Uh, I'm I'm a, a business owner. Uh, I've done my 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 stint in the the corporate five. The the, the the top five. I've worked for major institutions and and enjoyed that. But uh, I saw a need for representation. I saw a need for um, helping with 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 rules, helping with laws, helping with 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 voices that were just being marginalized and continuing to be marginalized. And so, representative government. What that looks like to me is it looks like your neighbor. It looks like someone that that you may not agree with 100 percent of the time but they deserve representation you know we live in an environment where it's it's zero sum right well uh when when the when the winning number is 51 49 that means there's 49 percent of the population that has a different opinion than you do that means you might want to pay attention to that you know and so as we're moving into an environment where uh the republicans are just literally doing whatever they want getting away with whatever they want um, laying claim over things that don't belong to them. Um, it, it is time for us to make sure that voices are heard. Uh, it's time for us to make sure that there is an option. There, there is no coronation here. Uh, we have an electoral process for a reason. And so uh, I am proud to be the, the option for District 25 in Brazoria County. Wonderful. So can you tell us what are the top three issues that are the most important issues for your county? Absolutely. So the top issue in my campaign right now is women's rights. Uh, we can't, at a macro level, marginalize 50 percent of our population. We absolutely can't do that. And currently that is what uh, is being legislated. Laws are being created that say women can't choose their own anything. The, the legislator is going to stand between a woman and their doctor on a procedure or on um, on decisions. Um, it, it just it baffles me that women of of all backgrounds get marginalized and 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 some women are OK with that. And, and I'm challenged with that. I'm challenged with why, you know, different strokes for different folks. And I let people you have to run your race. But when when the loudest voices are the voices saying, let me choose. And those voices are being ignored. We, we that's you can't unring that bell. I have a wife. I have a daughter. Uh, I have a mother. I have I have friends that I care so deeply about that are challenged with how do I stay in the state of Texas when I can't make decisions for myself and not just birth control as an uh, abortion as a means of birth control. I, we're talking about health matters. We're talking about sepsis. We're talking about uh, rape, incest. We're talking about things that, that, through no fault of their own, uh, I read a statistic that that 26,000 women had unplanned births this last year in the state of Texas from rape or incest. That is deplorable. We cannot allow this type of thing to happen. And so that is my number one priority: women's rights. The second priority that I am 
hyper focused on is education. Um, although I believe in everyone choose the school that you want to go to, but don't unfund our public education system for the sake of having your choice. That's we've already paid taxes to pay for our education. We've already paid. You've already taken the money out of our paychecks, out of our retirement, out of everything to pay for public education. You can't hold that money and say, until I get my way, I'm not going to fund your libraries. I'm not going to pay for your extracurricular activities. I'm not going to allow for special education programs or intellectually disabled programs. I'm not going to do that until I get my way. That's 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 not how the system is supposed to work. That's not what we do. So I'm not going to stand idly by. Uh, I'm going to lock arm in arm with my mother, who is a retired educator, with my mother's sister, my aunt, who is my godmother, who is a retired educator, um, her husband, my uncle, who is a retired educator. Um, every My brother is a teacher uh, in the, the elementary education system. For all of these people that are being squeezed out of a vocation because our governor thinks that private voucher scams are the way to go and only for first year right they're not renewable so everyone that that goes for a voucher to get that better education better have deep pockets because they've got to pay for it next year because they're not eligible the way it's currently written right so we have to have those voices in there saying that if you want to do this fine but you can't do it this way this isn't how you do it so education is absolutely my second and, and a, a very important matter for me. Third, which not diminishing any of them by number, but third is government accountability. We have to make sure that our government is accountable and answers to us. You can't just make decisions and, and, and they be independent of your voting population. You can't just say, well, my people were taken care of. So if you didn't vote for me, you can't, you know, I've got no response for you. That's that's we, we can't do that. That's not how represent, representative government works. So we have to ensure that we may not like the majority's decision, but if that's the majority's decision, we have to go with it. We can't just turn a blind eye to the majority of people. We are we are absolutely living in, you know, two steps away from an autocracy, you know, where we we knight people and we create an environment where the haves make all of the decisions and those decisions are the best for them, not the people that they're asking for representation. I want to represent that UAW worker that doesn't have the time because they're working two shifts to pay for their kids to go through college. I want to represent that person. I want to represent that mom that's working two part time jobs so that they can afford to have a roof over their head and count on their government to make sure that the lights don't go out during a storm. I want to represent those people. Those are the voices that I want to represent. So those are my three priorities. Uh, those are the things that I'm super hyper focused on. Uh, and with, you know, Mothers Against Greg Abbott and, and others, I hope that I can be the voice um, of that, of those people. You know what? Amen to that. I'm right there with you. I want to point out to anybody who's watching us today, especially if they live close to you in Brazoria County, Brazoria County is very close to turning blue, incredibly close. And with your help, we can do it. We can do it. They get closer and closer every single cycle. This is an area that deserves investment, that deserves some elbow grease, that deserves to be seen and heard. So please, please show up for Jay because you heard him today. He's awesome. He's awesome. You heard him. Let's do this. So Jay, tell us, where can we find you and how best can we support you right now while you're running for office? Today, you can find me at the Shadow Creek baseball field because I'm coaching my son's baseball team. But uh, beyond that, um, you can find me on uh, daggettfortexas.org. Uh, you can find me on jdaggett.org, my website. Um, you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on threads. You can find me on Facebook at Daggett for Texas. Um, uh, my social media presence is there, but I tell you, call me, you know, you go to my website. My phone number is there. Nothing's going to change. Right. Um, although we have a new driver of this bus, the issues are still the same. So I've been here since the primary. I've been here since the beginning. Reach out. We do phone banking. My, my friends and I, we do what I call virtual block walking, right? Who doesn't have 200 contacts in their phone? Send them a quick text message, just making sure Hey, are you thinking about voting? 
hey, I'm going to vote on this day. Can I come with you? Can you come with me? Hey, these are the candidates that I'm looking at. You might want to check their website. If we if we encourage two people to vote, we will double voter turnout. It's all about turnout. It's not about how much money I raise. It's not how much money I spend. It is 100% about voter turnout. So if we can encourage the same people you text in your book club, the same people you text for wine on Tuesdays or wine on Wednesdays, whatever it is, make sure that that group of people is charged up and excited and encourage them to vote. Even if you're not voting for me in Brazoria County, participate in the process. I highly encourage you to participate in the process because your vote matters. Encourage two people. Follow up with them. Make sure you have their email. Make sure you text them on the day that you're going to vote. Hold two people accountable and we will double voter turnout. I promise you. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Jay. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the campaign trail. Loved hearing from you today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.